Okay, so last episode we ended at $221.70 as our account balance. It's very disappointing as we had previously reached like around $370, but then this happened, which you guys saw last episode. Really unfortunate, but it's time to bounce back and bring this account back to live. So let's get into it. Alright, so I don't have any live recordings for you guys, but um, if you guys can see here, our account is now sitting at $307.50. So we've recovered about um like $80 since last episode, um, which is pretty cool here. So let's review the trades we got. And again, we kind of had almost a similar thing that happened last week. Okay, so if you guys can see here, this is when futures opened up here. Um, we saw an initial dump, and let's actually head over to Trading View to show you guys. Futures opened up over here, and then they started dumping, and they found some support here. So let's let's get rid of all my previous drawings real quick. So we're creating some kind of support there, but I actually decided to go short here as we approach this demand zone um, which is not something I normally do but the reason I decided to go short here um, is because of this opening candle right here so let's zoom in even a little bit closer the fact we saw this right here this initial push up and then it dumped back down that made me believe that we can potentially see this demand zone break and if this demand zone eventually breaks we have a lot of room to the downside because our next nearest demand zone was down here that was at least a 20 point drop that we could catch there and our, ri or our risk would be placed at the high of the session. So right there. So if we have an entry around here, we're risking about just under 10 points um, for the potential to make 20 points. So about a one to two risk reward. So I enter my first contract short on this candle right here. At 4,067, I sell my first contract. Then we see a little push up and then we start seeing this candle here, this wick. And that kind of like served as confirmation for me. I liked how that candle was reacting. So I decided to add a second contract there. The demand ended up holding again. We climbed up, made a new high, but it wasn't as strong. And then we got this big reaction again. That's the second time or the third time really, because this is the first time um, we're seeing this big reaction as we try to push up. So there's clearly some sellers here and um, they're just waiting for the right opportunity to completely break this chart down. But they're definitely present there. You can see, you know, when they want to push it, they can really start pushing us down. So I decided to add a third contract there. I felt it's going to be confirmation. And it might be time to break down. And once again, we make this new high, but then we get a decent reaction coming all the way down to this demand zone again. And then we stall here, bounce around a little bit. It looks like we're about to break down another big candle here. Do you see this big reaction candle here? I really like that. So I added another contract there. Unfortunately, that was a big mistake. Um, hindsight 2020. And I actually take a... Uh, a profit my first profit target hit it hit down here so i had four contracts it shows that as a loss because the first contract you buy is the first contract you sell technically right but if you looked at my average price my average price was like around here so technically that was in profit but you know it just shows up as a loss so technically it was a realized loss um, we come down here but then again we start waking up and then we start seeing a big reaction there i didn't like this candle here and i thought all right they're gonna keep messing around with us it doesn't look like this demand wants to break just yet so I ended up getting stopped out right there, but then look at this. <laughs> Once again, they're playing around with this. And this is, I guess, something I have to learn because I haven't been a big overnight sessions trader. I guess because of the liquidity limitations, they really have to do this thing where like they kind of like trick you. They're going to send it one way, then they break us down. So I've been trading this small account major majority of the time in overnight sessions because um, you know, once we go to live session, I like to focus on my main account. So yeah, like this tends to be a pretty normal thing where like they fake you out in overnight sessions. I need to get used to that and um, start, you know, implementing that to my strategy because I haven't been used to trading the overnight session. So this is all kind of new to me. Do you see this happen sometimes in, you know, the, the regular trading hour session, but it's not as common and it's not as drastic as it is in the overnight session. So this is like the second, third time this is happening to us where we get stopped out and then they drop us with a big move. Um, so clearly that's something we have to like take note of here. And so we get stopped out there. It really sucks because again, we had four or three contracts at this point. Would have been a really nice win there. But I did end up reshorting here. Um, I actually, I think I ended up going long here because I thought, all right, maybe we're going to push up. Might as well make some money. Might go retest this level, then drop. And so I got stopped out of that. You can see here, this red trade here sucks. But then I decided, all right, let's short this. We're coming back to the demand zone. This is going to be what? The first, second, third. I guess you can count this. So first, second, third, fourth. Uh, I guess you can count that. Four and a half. Four, five and a half. Six. This is going to be the sixth time. Six and a half 
um, time that we're coming down to this demand zone. It eventually has to break. I've explained this in previous videos how there's bright buyers present here. The more times you test it, the less and less buyers there's available. And so eventually it's gonna crack. And that's what we get. And we get this big, nice reaction, which is what I was looking for um, in my trade thesis. So we get that nice reaction. I end up taking my first profit, take profit there. And then we see this pretty decent bounce there. It was kind of annoying, but I decided to set my profit target down here. And then I had my stop loss just right above break even. And then I went to sleep at this point because it was 1 a.m. So it plays out, makes a new low day comes back up, comes down, you know, just, just kind of chops around a little bit. And then we finally see that nice reaction. And then my t take profit hits around around 5.30 a.m., close to 6 a.m. So right before market was going to open. Um, it kind of sucks a little bit because then we got a nice little, what is this, another 30 point move here. Would have been really nice to catch that, but unfortunately I had my take profit. Again, take having your take profits out there can be both a positive and negative. You guys saw how it worked against us not having it out there last episode and now it worked kind of against us again having it actually being out there. Um you know whatever, but still not not too bad. Ended up giving us a nice little win there. So this kind of set the precedent for the day. It gives us like key levels to watch out for. Similarly to how I use this as a key resistance area. Now this is gonna be a key support area here because it got a big reaction. So now we're looking at market open. Market opened around here. We saw that initial pop up. So that's your high of day set. And then we see this nice push down. I didn't play any of this. Um, I wanted to wait for some cons consolidation first. And you can also see this demand zone here comes into play. Where does this demand zone come from? comes from this previous big reaction we got on this candle here and then we tested again and it was unable to break above it and then today we're coming back to this level so that's where this zone comes in comes from so it was a demand zone because it was holding here as support but now once we come below it you flip the color and it now becomes a, a supply zone so this is set as the low of day this is set as the high of day and we start seeing this ascending triangle and ascending triangle is basically prices going up but it doesn't necessarily mean we're bullish. Um, you know, you're creating higher lows, but these higher lows, they can easily be broken. They don't have a lot of support. And once they are broken, you're probably gonna see a nice reaction. And you're seeing this slowly climb up into a, a supply zone. So it's kind of like a roller coaster, right? You slowly climb up and then you get that big dramatic drop, um, which is what we see here. I ended up playing this um, intraday all right, never mind then. I guess I, I caught that on my um, options account, but not on this futures account. So I guess never mind. I didn't catch this move here. Just some tiny scalps here to um, bring the count up a little bit, but no, but I didn't catch that major move. But that would have been a really nice move to catch. It's perfect. Coming into the supply zone, this ascending triangle, it kind of faked you out again, like it was going to break out. And then we see that major drop there, and then we get a nice move. Make a new low of day here. Initially try to act like a double bottom, but eventually we got we broke below it, then retest it and see that next continuation lower. So uh, pretty nice to see that. And here we're breaking down this other um, demand zone here with a nice little move. We're down almost 1.6% on the day on SPX. So nice uh, down day today. Pretty nice continuation as well and a good range to trade. Dropping below 4K, what is um, ES at? Oh, dro just dropped below 4K right now. Um, so definitely a good day if you were playing the short side today. Um, but yeah, that's basically the update for the account. We're now sitting at 307.50. I would have liked for us to um, hit around 400 for this episode, but um, I guess it's not going to happen. But it's all good. We're back above 300. Basically recovered most of the losses from last episode. And um, nice, nice breakdown. All right, but um, don't want to make this video too long. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, the updates for the account. The account is now sitting at 307.50. Uh, decent day for the account. Um, and yeah, we're making progress. We're about 30% of the way there to 1K. And let's see how many episodes it can take us. Hopefully you can hit it before episode 10. I think that's very doable. Um, yeah, because right now we're currently on episode 3 and we're at $300. So next episode, hopefully we can hit 400 and then continue going that way until we hit 1K. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video though. And I'll catch you guys in episode 4. Um, but yeah, peace.